the Tree of Life describes how all life has evolved on our planet. It is a graphical and visual representation of how all living organisms are related to each other. So, if you want to see how closely related chimpanzees are to humans, for example, you could do so using a tree. However, the significance of the Tree of Life doesn't end there. The origin of all organisms and viruses can be traced back along its branches, down its trunk, and eventually to its roots. This is where we find the last common ancestor of all life. Thanks to recent developments in genome sequencing and bioinformatics technologies, we are now able to analyze large amounts of molecular and genomic data using samples from a wide range of microorganisms and viruses. We can essentially travel back in time. We are now able to infer the timing and origin of pathogen outbreaks and pandemics predict and forecast the evolution of pathogens in human populations, organize groups of organisms into distinct taxonomic groups, and postulate hypotheses about the origin and diversification of life on our planet. Among these challenges, perhaps the most controversial and highly charged is the identification of the common ancestor of all life present at the root of the tree of life. Specifically, there's a lot of debate around how the major domains or supergroups of life – archaea, bacteria, eukarya, and viruses – are evolutionarily related to each other. Finding the root of the tree of life is not an easy endeavor. First, the events that led to the diversification of modern groups of organisms and viruses. These events likely happened very long time ago, possibly billions of years ago. Over such time scales, our power to reliably date and reconstruct these historical events is obviously greatly limited and very challenging. In other words, it might be easier to generate hypotheses rather than to actually test them. Second, popular or common methods that we routinely use to build phylogenies uh, are based on the composition and order of nucleotides and nucleic acids and amino acids and proteins. These methods may not work very well when we are resolving the distant evolutionary past. Oh, this is because over time, genes and proteins are subject to a diverse range of evolutionary events, for example, mutation saturations, substitutions, insertions, deletions, duplications, rearrangements, horizontal gene transfer, and many others. Um, in general, the longer the time scale, the greater the severity of these events will be. This fact naturally complicates gathering both sufficient genetic data, including homologous genes and proteins, and then reliably aligning them or comparing them for phylogenetic inferences. For example, due to a combined effect of these evolutionary events, many homologous proteins may no longer be identifiable, especially in fast evolving organisms, and will be excluded from our analysis due to technological limitations, thereby yielding an incomplete evolutionary picture. Different phylogenetic approaches utilizing different sets of molecular characters and taxa have produced different topologies of the trees of life, which can be categorized into two major paradigms, 3D and 2D trees. The 3D tree presents archaea, bacteria, and eukarya as three separate superkingdoms. This paradigm has two popular forms. In the classical Wozian tree, the root of the tree is the branch leading to bacteria. In the alternative Wozian tree, the root of the tree is in the branch leading to archaea. A variant of these 3D trees also includes viruses. It places the root of the tree within a branch leading to viruses, which technically makes it a 4D tree. The second major paradigm is the 2D tree. 2D trees consider the existence of only two separate super kingdoms. They have two popular forms. In the classical eocyte tree, archaea and bacteria are the only super kingdoms. Eukarya evolved from archaea, perhaps by the phagocytosis of the bacterial cell. In the alternative 2D tree, eukarya and prokarya are the only super kingdoms. Proponents for any one of these trees passionately defend their tree topologies. As a result, this has led to a great deal of controversy within academic circles. To reconcile hypotheses and resolve controversy, we propose that reconstructing the tree of life is an imperfect science, plagued by many difficulties. This includes selecting the right set of mutation-prone molecular characters and selecting the appropriate range of organisms in which these homologous characters can be detected. 
Then one must employ phylogenetic and phylogenomic methods that are not blind to the history of evolutionary events that have shaped the observed distribution of molecular characters in sampled organisms. This is obviously a grand challenge that requires a multi-pronged approach. In the first step of this multi-pronged approach, basic comparative genomic approaches must dissect how the molecular characters are distributed across the genomes of organisms and viruses. Rather than relying on single characters, such as individual genes or protein sequences, this analysis must be performed on the widest possible range of molecular characters. This includes an exhaustive census of conserved protein domain structures, protein domain loops, RNA families, ribosomal proteins, gene ontology terms defining the molecular functions and biological processes of genes, ancient metabolic enzymes, and the range of virus-host interactions for each major superkingdom. Moreover, rather than focusing on a limited set of taxa, each and every genome available in public databases must be surveyed. This approach allows us to evaluate how the inferred conclusions from one combination of characters and taxa differ from another. Surprisingly, comparative genomic approaches used so far generally recover a stronger sharing between eukarya and bacteria to the exclusion of archaea. This provides strong experimental support to the alternative Woesian 3D tree rooted in archaea. However, this comparative genomics approach is imperfect as well. First of all, it relies too heavily on the availability of sequenced genomic data from major super kingdoms. This makes it heavily biased towards the sequencing of bacterial and viral pathogens of eukaryotes. In turn, archaea are greatly underrepresented. Second, the approach does not embody retrodiction. There's no effort to reconstruct the past with evolutionary genomic methods. Finally, the approach can also be blind to major bottlenecks and other major evolutionary events that happened in the past. In a second step, phylogenomics approaches must be optimized to analyze each set of unique characters and repeat the exercise over decades using an ever-increasing sampling of genomes. This will help evaluate how phylogenomic inferences withstood the test of time. The analysis must also reconstruct phylogenomic trees that are rooted. In our experience of implementing phylogenomic approaches, we have nearly always recovered the Waitian 3D tree rooted in archaea. This rooted topology has remained robust using a variety of combinations of tags and characters in over nearly two decades of effort. Congruence provides the much needed certainty that is missing from most tree of life reconstructions. Therefore, comparative and evolutionary genomic analyses must demonstrate congruence on the maximum possible range of diverse molecular characters using the widest possible sampling of taxa. Topological patterns must be conserved across methods and approaches before attempting any type of historical interpretation. So far, the originally proposed 3D tree of life withstands refutation. The search for an improved evolutionary tree of life model continues.